Not a bad guess. Well, turns out the leaks were right, and my mock-up was actually pretty close. So here's the mock-up that I made here, with the paper, cut it and feathered uh, so it can be bent in. Hopefully you saw the last video. And then here's a new little uh, can mock-up for the cell, the 4680 size cell. It's a little smaller than my mock-up, but it is definitely quite a bit bigger than the old technology. This is sort of the progress over the last 10 years, I guess. By the time this is in production, this, which was the pinnacle of electric vehicle battery technology, which was basically borrowed from laptops at the time, will finally be replaced by something else, and this is it. The 2170 size cell, you know, was a progression from this, but not enough. And so now this is the one. It's been confirmed that this will be used in the new Plaid Tesla Model S, and that may be the first product that will use it, though it will definitely also be used in the Cybertruck and the semi-truck, if everything goes to the plan that they showed. So let's go over some of the top specs of the new cell. They did do the tabless current collector, like I expected. The new design elements of this cell will make it simpler, cheaper, and faster to manufacture. But simple is hard. It'll take them a while to perfect everything planning to use a new silicon anode based off of what looks to be the raw crystals bound together with elastic coatings. Basically these new elastic coatings and binders and the silicon is what they showed at the event, so I don't know if they're intending on still using graphite at all or if it's going to be just a pure silicon anode now. It seemed to be the impression they were giving. I don't know if that's been clarified. It sounds like since they're going to be using these cells first in their high performance vehicles, the ones that require the most performance or range, they'll be using the high nickel cathode. They may expand this format to the other chemistries later I'm not sure. Uh, it sounded like, at least for quite some time, that their other suppliers would be providing the other chemistries and then providing those in more traditional cell formats. We'll just have to see what happens. They're planning to do good closed-loop-ish recycling so that they don't have to rely on so much raw material, especially as time goes forward and we have much more of this stuff in circulation. They're intending on integrating these cells into the chassis with structural adhesives. Sounds like they're going to cool it from the bottom, as there'd be a cooling system running through the casting that these would then be bound to. We'll have to see how they intend on electrically connecting everything. But the biggest point of all of this is the enormous price reduction. 56% is the figure they gave us. And if they get anywhere near that, it'll be really something. Now, a lot of doubt remains. A lot of people aren't sure if this is legit, if they can pull it off, or really what they even saw. Some people were downplaying it, including some experts saying, well, this technology's existed before, and well, these ideas have been there before. But quite frankly, I don't think most people who are being, you know, really straightforwardly honest about this stuff would say that this has actually been in production in any meaningful scale before basically any of these technologies. I could tell you one person who seems to be quite excited about it. That's Sandy Monroe. One thing they could have done to quell some of the doubts would have been actually having this thing there on stage, but I think I'm going to talk about that in another video. Due to the way that YouTube works, I feel like I sort of have to have multiple channels. One, I intend on this one, the Tinker, to be actually more projects, DIY stuff, hands-on, whether they're demonstrations, showing off of prototypes, or perhaps showing the progress of various collaborations with other people out there. So the channel where I might be doing more discussion and review type things would be the Tinker Talks. I might cover a variety of topics, not just pertaining to electric vehicles, though maybe I will have enough content just on electric vehicles alone in order to concentrate on that, but maybe not. I may venture fairly broad with that channel. We'll see what happens. But I intend on making a video for that channel pertaining specifically to the entirety of Battery Day in all of its aspects. I won't get super technical about the battery itself. I didn't see all of the detail that I necessarily needed to in order to properly evaluate everything, but they gave a really good big picture and they showed a lot more than some people thought there would be. I even had some thoughts about Elon's reaction to how the press reacted or didn't react to Battery Day. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out my video on my second channel, The Tinker Talk. Once I do it, if I actually pull it off, 
I'll have a link in the description. Also linked in the description, I will also have relevant videos from Sean Mitchell, Sandy Monroe, as he appeared on Autoline. I thought that was interesting. And I think I'll even reference EED blog. <laughs> and at the end of his video, he seemed a little bit confused as to what the big deal was with these things. Well, I think Sandy Monroe actually answered that quite well. So the link that I'll be posting to the official Autoline video with Sandy Monroe and the other battery expert and the two hosts will be timestamped to the part that I found most relevant. And the simple answer as to why these cylindrical cells are a much bigger deal than the prismatic and pouch cells is because of cost and a little bit of thermals. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you on the other channel. Goodbye.